driving an i3. Turning it on. All right. Sounds like Demolition Man. What's up, good people? All right, so different kind of video. Today, I am driving a BMW i3. Uh, as you see in the title of this video here, we are doing a, I don't want to say a review, um, somewhat of a reaction, more of just the perspective of a muscle car guy driving an i3. And I'm gonna give you my reaction. The sun's glaring in my eyes, so don't think that I'm like pissed off already, like I hate being in this car. I actually don't hate being in this car. I don't love it at all. We're driving through the streets of Oakland today. I am, uh, I'm just cruising around. I'm actually thinking I'm gonna to try to find a CVS. I need to go pick up a few things at a CVS store. Let's see if I have anything worth saving here. Uh, $6 reward, folks. Baby wipes, oh yeah, okay. Buy two packs of gum, get one free. Excuse me for a minute. First thing I would say is, man, I don't want to start with a negative, but uh, when you let off on the acceleration pedal, the car almost comes to a complete stop. Like, I mean, just, it just stops. They could have built this car without having a brake pedal. I understand like, it's probably trying to like gather energy from the wheels rotating when it's not in acceleration. I'm not stupid, I get that part. I mean, I'm stupid, but I'm not dumb. Last night, I was driving this car home and getting off the highway. I was getting off the highway. I was doing about 55 off the highway. I let off the gas so I can kind of coast off of my exit. And when I let off the gas at 55, the car came to a complete stop about 30 yards before I even got off the exit. It's almost jarring. It almost feels like um, it doesn't want to go forward. And it would be cool if it could, you know, collect recharge energy from the uh, from the wheels inertia while also letting you coast because I think if it could let you coast you would inevitably save more uh, energy because you know if you're going downhill you don't have to press the gas you could just let let the car roll so far it feels like even when I'm going down a hill the car will try to come to a complete stop and I will actually have to hit the gas going downhill which is just weird. But I don't wanna make this video just purely about how much I, as a muscle car guy, hate the i3. There are some cool things I like. Uh, for example, the interior. I do have to say, I like the simplicity of the interior. I know that these cars are made with like all vegan materials on the interior. I'm not even sure what that means, but I do like, um, the different materials that are used and, um, and brought together, I think they make a really nice uh, combination of materials. Uh, I like the uh, the simple screen uh, for the radio and other functions. And I like the, the screen for the gauges as well. That screen, that screen. Radio is kind of classic BMW looking-ish there. And then uh, there's some center console stuff there. Let's see if I can, there we go, brighten that up. Now in a video I made maybe about six months ago, I mentioned how BMW has literally gone so far away from what they once were as a car brand and what they represented as a car brand. Not that they're making bad cars now, not that they don't have a good amount of enthusiasts who are into BMW cars, they're great cars. However, the company as a whole seems to be trying to target every single possible consumer there is in the automotive market. I mean, when you list through all the different BMW models that there are, at this point, I could name them all and I would probably forget some. I mean, there's the, the one, the M1, the X1, the two, the M2, the X2, the three, the M3, the X3, I think there's a Grand Coupe three, the four, the M4, the X4, I know there's a Grand Coupe 4, the 5, the M5, the X5, there, I don't believe there's a Grand Coupe 5, correct me if I'm wrong, comment in the box below, there might be a Grand Coupe 5 as well, the 6, the Grand Coupe 6, the M6, the X6, 
the 7, the i8, the i3. Am I forgetting some 7 models? It's confusing. I guess this car is needed. Like, there has to be a car that if you're wealthy and you live in California and you just don't want to drive a Prius because of what Priuses represent, but you want to have uh, an electric car and you don't really go very far, I'm starting to almost understand why Prius owners irk me so bad. It keeps you in this state of conservatism because you're constantly looking at how much battery life is left, how much, you know, how many miles can you go based on the energy you have? I guess, you know, in a Prius, that's a hybrid. So that's probably like, you're trying to like stay in electric mode and, and never go into gas mode or, or something to that effect. But here's the weird thing. I've been constantly like nervous. Like there's this, there's this nervous feeling I have of, of running out of power and, and not having any solution for that. And I wonder if that's why Prius drivers drive the way they do. I mean, this isn't a Prius, this is a full electric. I got this app that can help me find charging stations. But you know, the difference between driving and owning an electric car and driving and owning a gas power car is, you know, especially a muscle car, you don't buy a muscle car if you care anything about saving gas, at least, I don't think you should. Um, but when you're driving a gas car, like there's always a gas station, you know, for the most part, there's always a gas station. So you, you could run out of, you could, you could use a quarter of your tank and decide, you know what, I'm gonna go top off and just go fill up your tank back up to full again. Jeez, lady. It gets kind of nerve wracking. Like, you know, it starts to kind of consume you and it starts to be like the main thing you're worried about as you're driving your electric car. And for me, someone who's, you know, not really used to, to that experience, like I could see myself just kind of becoming more of a nervous person in general as as I would own a car like this. I know Tesla's working on trying to have like super fast charging stations and, and maybe that'll bleed over into the rest of the electric car market. Um, Elon Musk has a lot on his plate. You know, he's also trying to get us to Mars too. Um, you know, kudos, Elon. I'm gonna attempt something real quick. I am gonna do a zero to 60 pull. Holy crap. Okay, so. The car is not slow in the least bit. Oh man, that is that is a lot of inertia when it needs, and it's just go, go, go. It's There's no like transition up, it's just fucking go. That's awesome. Uh, the car is definitely not slow. Of course, I just killed like four miles. It just dawned on me. I have a teenager and I have a nine-year-old as well. For someone who wants to put their kid in a car that they can technically get around in, but not inflict too much damage on anybody, not get too far, not go too fast. And I know, I know, I know, I said the car is fast. However, when you're constantly driving and worried about how much range you have left, you drive slower. This might be the perfect car, especially in the pre-owned market, because I believe pre-owned, you can find one of these i3s, two, three years old, for around about 16, 17,000, which isn't that bad if you think about it. All in all, what do I think about the BMW i3 as a muscle car guy? Well, I won't say I hate it. I very, 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 very much don't like it. Get it for your teenager. I mean, when they take their foot off the acceleration pedal, the car will just stop. They won't go too fast because they'll be trying to go to too many places as teenagers do, and they won't want to kill their range. And maybe if uh, there's charging stations at you know Barnes and Noble bookstores, if there are any left, well, they'll read while their car is charging or do something else productive. The funny part is my buddy Jason, you guys know Jason, uh, who owns the Aventador, the, the matte red Aventador. This is actually Jason's car. This is one of Jason's daily drivers. You know, when you own an Aventador or a Lamborghini in general, you don't want to drive that car every day. It's, it's kind of painful to drive every day. It's 
It's not meant for daily driving. So you want something that you can just kind of get around in unassumingly, you know, when you need to just like go to CVS or, you know, grab some ice cream. I guess you want to grab ice cream in a Ventador, I guess. But for the most part, this is what he drives just to get around town, you know, to and from work. Um, he can park in the charging station at his at his office and uh, yeah, it works for him. So this has been my perspective as a muscle car guy driving a BMW i3. I am ready to get out of the car. It's, yeah, it's not for me. I hope you like this. If you do, please hit that thumbs up button. Please subscribe. Please share this with your friends. I'm trying to get this channel to a thousand subscribers. I appreciate you guys. And this has been Taj and Cars. Peace.